How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. I'm a little tired today. I had a long night. <laughs> I had a very long night. I haven't been able to recover from yesterday. All afternoon, I'm, I'm moping around. Listen, this is what happens. You're hitting, I'm hitting 40 this year. This is what happens, I guess, right? Things slow down. You know what's not slowing down? Professional wrestling, a lot to talk about today on the show. The Rock appeared on the Pat McAfee show. Interesting. They had a very interesting conversation, possibly setting up a WrestleMania return. We're going to talk about that. The Rock also was on SmackDown. Big surprise. I'm curious how it affected the numbers once people found out that Dwayne's on there. AEW coming to Queens, New York. Grand Slam at Arthur Ashe is this week. I'm going to be there. Rich is going to be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. And the big story from this week, possible changes to AEW regarding streaming and pay-per-view. I dropped this little tidbit on Thursday. I'm sorry, on Friday during the Matt Men podcast. But I have a little bit more details. I had a lot of questions come my way about this. Some things I know, some things I have no clue, and I'm going to talk about it. If I don't know something, I'm going to say, I have no idea. I could always find out. All this and a whole lot more today. Also, we're going to talk about Collision. We're going to talk about next week's great Collision card. I'm, I'm liking this. Dynamite that's coming up. And everything else happening here in the world of professional wrestling. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Hey, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Big story this week. I guess so. I guess, I, you know, I, I didn't expect it to, to become as big as it did, but it seems like it became big because my entire timeline was flooded on Friday and I had questions from everybody about this. Uh, I dropped a little tidbit on another show that I do called the Matt Men Podcast. And... Conversation was about AEW and streaming rights and what's going on. And I said, hey, listen, I had a conversation. I, I, I'm, I'm, my exact words, MGR producer, do you have it? I don't want to say anything out of line here before I get yelled at. My producer yells at me violently while I do the show. My quote was, I feel confident to say that AEW will be on max in 2024 and AEW will expand its pay-per-view schedule to 12 a year. You know, every successful professional wrestling company has expanded to 12 a year. I don't, I was shocked at the, 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 the amount of people that don't want this, right? They don't want 12 pay-per-views. And I understand that if, if you think you're going to have to pay $600 a year to watch this, you know, 50 bucks a month. Yeah. You know, I can understand you're, you're not willing to pay that, but I don't know if that's the case here. I don't know if these 12 pay-per-views are going to be a bundled package on Max that you pay a monthly fee for. I don't know if they're going to be with the current page structure that Max has at whatever it is, you know. Uh, they are adding a sports tier, right? They're adding a sports section or a hub or whatever they call it. I don't know if, Ma if this is falling under it. I kind of feel like it is based on conversations that I've had. Uh, so pretty much what was said to me was, you know, Warner's commitment to AEW is is there. Uh, this isn't going to be a situation where Tony has to look for another place. In my, I mean, in my conversations, right? I, I could only tell you what has been said to me, and these are very credible people. Same people that told me that CM Punk was coming to AEW. Same people that told me Adam Cole was coming to AEW. <laughs> so I have to, I, I take this as... Uh, non-wrestling people telling me wrestling stuff and it's generally accurate 99% of the time you know this is the big story what do you do with AEW with this TV deal right what do you do with AEW with all this content that they've they've accumulated over the last three years what do you do with Ring of Honor what do you do with their pay-per-views BR was a band-aid from day one and right now it's a, it's a big band-aid because there's no other platform for them to air this digitally and they're part of, you know, obviously the Warner family. They're on Warner. They have exclusivity with Warner. So they have to be on a platform for them. 
By the way, this is the same problem that Showtime Boxing has had uh, with it being a separate application. It's not through Showtime's app. It's through another app. Uh, you know, a lot of companies have had the same exact problem. You know, Max is trying to fix this. Warner's trying to fix this with Max. So, I mean, if I'm going to take a very uh, clear-cut guess here, I I'm expecting Q1, we should probably hear something, or, or, or it would be done by Q1. I know that they were looking to test something regarding sports on Max in Q4. I don't know if that's still happening. I don't know if they got delayed here. But this is looking great for AEW. You know, next day rights, there's money in that. There's money in your archives, being on a platform, living on the platform, watch hours on the platform. These are all valuable buzz phrases that, you know, streaming providers like to use. And this would only help Max. And of course, this is a huge help for AEW. But listen, I have no problem 12 pay-per-views a year on Max. If I have to pay, a, you know, an extra $4.99 a month or whatever, whatever they charge me, I'm fine with that too. I think more content is better. Look how much, look at all the wrestling we're getting right now with AEW. You have two pay-per-views for the rest of the year. We got full gear and Wrestle Dream. Wrestle Dream looks like it's going to be a great pay-per-view. Full gear, I'm sure that right now, you know, it, the, this company is in a very crucial point where they have to do some really cool stuff. This announcement will only help with this. Now, a lot of people ask me about international. I have no idea. I didn't even ask about that. That wasn't said to me. A lot of people have asked about Ring of Honor. I've never heard once a Ring of Honor conversation with anybody over there. I don't know if they see that as under the AEW umbrella. I don't know if there's a big, you know, everybody's quiet about a Ring of Honor deal. Uh, I don't, I haven't heard anything about it. So uh, when I say AEW will be on Max, I, I'm talking AEW. You know, it's possible Ring of Honor would be, and I, I would say put Ring of Honor on there. Has 20 something years of content and pay per views. Those are watch hours. I, I, I think that's the important thing here. But again, it really depends. It's a negotiation, it's financials, right? I think this is a positive. What do you think, MJ, our producer here? Yeah, we've been talking about this for a while, but I think I am all for as much content as you can get out of it. I like your idea with putting ROH archives up there if you can. Um, I don't know what the legality would that be, but um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. And there's, what, almost four years now of um, archive content from... Uh, AEW at this point so there's a lot of stuff I I think I, we talked on um, Matt Men. I said give me a hub just give me a hub in max yeah where I can just click on it and it can take me to everything what are you and willing to pay you know simple. is there a number you're willing to pay extra I'm curious what the, what the audience's um, number is if there's a number that you have to pay extra for this and I'm again I'm not reporting that I don't know the financial side of this well that that goes into the pay-per-views right what what happens with the pay-per-views do we do we get twelve fifty dollars a pop, or do you? Pay, is it going to be like ESPN Plus, where you yeah. pay your initial uh, buy-in, and then then we get to the other part, right? You know, when WWE so, went to that network structure, there was a lot mm -hmm. of back and forth internally at that time. There were many, many people that were against killing your pay-per-view model, right? Because what other opportunity do you get? to possibly generate, you know, millions of dollars on on one show for people to order. You know, you have a WrestleMania. And remember, at that time, it was like 60 bucks for WrestleMania. I think HD was like $74. That's, that's almost a million people purchasing that. That's a lot of revenue. So a lot of people on the WWE side were like, why are we giving away this revenue? But there were... A ton of people that were adamant that streaming is the way to go. The pay-per-view model is dead. We saw that it's not. Boxing has uh, had a, a entire renaissance with pay-per-view buys. A celebrity boxing has become a thing now with the Paul brothers. UFC obviously didn't kill their pay-per-view model. So I don't know for AEW financially it would be smart. But, you know, if Max wants to look at this as some sort of loss leader here, and Max thinks that they could charge you, you know, an extra nine dollars a month, nine ninety nine a month to get the AEW archives, and that comes with, 
you know, everything AEW's done along with pay-per-views, great. Maybe you charge for your big four. Maybe you charge for all in. I don't know. That's it what really, I would say, right? I don't know. I would say I would say all in, all out, um, full gear, and uh, double or nothing. Okay, so you're and big what's four. What's the other one? You know, but and, or you say no, yeah. mm-hmm. or or you're looking for growth. You're looking for more people to discover you. More people are on streaming. If I'm if I'm searching, you know, I'm going to call it channel surfing. I'm using hand quotes here. If I'm channel surfing on Max. And I'm like, what is this AEW? That's more eyeballs. That's more discoverability. You know, and that's something that AEW needs. So I don't know what the right answer here is. Um, you know, obviously, this was a lot of people thought this would be done by now. Dave Meltzer reported. I had heard the same exact thing that All In was originally supposed to be on Max. Because it didn't make sense for them to pay, you know, for people to pay for two pay-per-views. They ended up doing two pay-per-views. Um, Tony wanted to bundle this the two pay-per-views for for like a discounted rate. It didn't happen. I kind of think they should have at this point because of the buy rate that All Out got. But, you know, this is all fresh stuff. This is all new Uncharted stuff for them. I think this is a positive. Uh, I'd love to see, you know, all the archives in one place. I'd love to see the Ring of Honor archives. There's There are some issues with the quality of some of those tapes. Uh, they have to heavily, you know, I guess remaster some of those. Also, what is on those archives? You know, I don't think Max is going to blindly put this stuff on there. They have to go through everything and see uh, what happened on each of these shows. Different times, you know, 20 years ago, Ring of Honor, very different company. People got away with a lot more than they do today. So I'm not saying that that's the case here. I'm just saying these are all things that have to happen here. When we come back, we're going to talk about The Rock and what he's going to be doing. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. The Rock was on Pat McAfee's show on Friday. Friday was a busy, busy day for pro wrestling. This was very interesting, okay, for a number of reasons. One, um, Dwayne put, dropped a couple tidbits here. One being that in early 2022... Him, Nick Khan, and Vince had a face, uh, had a, a, a conversation. I don't know if it was a face to face. I think it was uh, about Dwayne facing Roman at WrestleMania in LA. It was essentially a lock, what he said. And this goes back, Matt, when did we report this? When were we told this? I mean, around that same time, right? It was early 2022. I think it was 2021. I, I had heard the rumblings, late 2021. The rumblings yeah, it were was happening. around that time. I don't, I don't know when it was exactly. But no, probably yeah, early 2022. That I think that's an yeah, accurate. Yeah, it was number. around that time. Yeah, because you had, you were adamant that they were probably they were looking that way, and it, and we started hearing rumblings that it was going to happen. Um, and yeah. then if you listen to what he said on the McAfee show, it was they just couldn't decide on a story um, that made sense. And it sounds like they are work. Sounds like the whole bloodline story is they're just taking their time with it, and it's leading to that. So we'll, well see. they got to they 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 got to they got to refresh it a little bit here the bloodline stuff. I think it, it I think they had a little bit of a dip, but Roman's not been on TV, so there you go. So this is very interesting. So that was supposed to happen in WrestleMania 39 in LA. He also hinted, you know, WrestleMania 40's coming up. Um I'm wondering if it would have benefited anybody if Dwayne and him had the match last year in LA versus having it at 40. I think now with the Endeavor connection uh, the merger, I, I think, you know, 40 seems to be very realistic because it's not, you know, The Rock being on that show on Friday on SmackDown was kind of a look what we could do here at Endeavor. I think it was a, it was a showing of look at the power that we have. Look at the star power that we have. You're not going to get Dwayne anywhere else. You're not going to get this mega superstar anywhere else. I think this is kind of, that was feeding into it a little bit. Um, listen, man, Roman Reigns and The Rock at WrestleMania 40 in Philly, that's a big night one or night two. You know, what happens to Cody? That's a big question. You know what I think, uh, yeah. real quick here, is I'm wondering if they're, gonna, they're going to set up an angle where Cody gets the title before then. Maybe The Rock costs Roman. And they just did... At SummerSlam, I was there, and they did the whole um, 
uh, tribal, what was it? Uh, uh, tribal battle or whatever it was with uh, yeah. Jey Uso. What if that's the story? Is they just bring that? I mean, back maybe that is. Another... Maybe it's a civil war, right? Maybe it becomes yeah, like a civil it's... war where he he's the real head of the family, you know. And I'm sure they could do mm -hmm. that. I I, I could see him, them doing his that. Age, yeah, and with his age, you can do a walk and brawl for you know if if Austin can do it, The Rock can do it. A walk and brawl for 15 minutes, and everybody would love it. And you know, and it doesn't have to be for the title at that point. It can be for family supremacy, and I think that works. Well, I, you know, of, and then when, Cody can go on with the title and do something else. Yeah, yeah, listen, I think Cody Cody could do something with the the other title. Uh, this match has to happen. This also could be not for a title. You know, this could just be yeah, a match. Roman saying. could drop that title at Royal Rumble. Roman could drop something else. You know, do something else. About, I I think the interesting Survivor thing Series? here, or it's in Chicago Survivor Series, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother about story. About certain some somebody, yeah. but yeah. Uh, by the way, I have not heard a freaking thing. That is all those rumors about CM Punk and Survivor Series. That is all, uh, totally, totally manufactured and manifested on the internet. There has well, been zero conversation about this. Yeah, well, he went on that uh, his that uh, MMA show this week the, that he was doing color commentary for and said something about I'm free for two and a half months. And it got people like talking. I don't, I wouldn't put any stock into that. How about you? Well, it's a 90 day. Then, then he has a 90 day non-compete. Right. Does he? I, I no mean, that's what it would mean, been, right? I'm free for yeah. the, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm free. What is it? I'm, I'm free again in two and a half months. He's already a half a month in 90 days is three months. 30, 30 plus just, 30 MG. That's how it works, right? You add the threes. Oh, I know. And then yes, put a zero at the end. Mean, Have you done this new math? I'm doing this new math with, with my kids. It's absolutely insane. <laughs> the new math. You know, it's like, it's insane. It's nuts. I, I'm like, just add the numbers. Like, no, you need a whole formula. I'm like, it's two plus two. What do you mean? What are we doing here? Um, I, I'm excited for this. Listen, uh, and, and I know some people are going to be very critical. He's taking a spot away from somebody. Listen, this is going to be the WWE of, of, of the future. These, these I'm taking a spot stuff. It's not the same company. My lights are. Do you see this flicker happening here? You see this? I gotta stop this here. I do. I don't know what's happening here. Uh, it was very distracting. No, listen. I you're gonna have a Logan. You're gonna have Logan Pauls. You're gonna have celebrities showing up. You're gonna have this. This is not now a mega company. This is not a pro wrestling promotion. All these people are gonna be involved. And especially in WrestleMania, the, that that old way of thinking, which, by the way, I agree with, you know, like guy works his butt off all year to get to his spot. And then is it fair that Dwayne is in that spot? You know what? If that guy could draw as well as Dwayne can, then he should be in that spot. That's the reality of it. But obviously, The Rock is one of the biggest celebrities on the planet at this point. Nobody has that look. Nobody has that feel. And... You know, if WWE can put him in the main event against their their top guy, the guy of the future for the next, I don't know, 10 years, how are you not going to do this? Very, very interesting. So he went on SmackDown. We'll go into SmackDown here. Pat McAfee op opened the show, and he was interrupted by Austin Theory. So Austin's out there, and they're having a conversation, and here comes The Rock to a huge reaction. Nobody was... Nobody was anticipating The Rock to be on that show until the there rumors started. There was a lot of surprise faces in that crowd. A lot of that. surprise faces in that crowd. Yeah. I don't think those people that bought those tickets expected him there. Um, but however, the you know the segment was kind of bu butchered. You know, here in the states, here on public radio, we have to follow the guidelines of the FCC, and. Uh, Certain words cannot be used. And that's one of those certain words was being used very repetitively uh, throughout that segment. There was a, a, uh, a holy something chant in the beginning that, that started the segment where they had to mute everything. Then, they, then The Rock started a, a, a chant that I, I think they knew that that would not be on TV. I don't Do we know I, that for sure. 
Uh, the Rock yeah. has always kind no. of pushed the push. I mean, unless right? unless he, he unless he just went out there and did his thing, but they're on Fox. They're on they're on over the air television. You can't you, that that will never cut it. And WWE did the, the, the best to kind of bleep it in time, but I guess it wasn't fast enough for the networks because you just had like ten seconds of just silence throughout the segment. When they were cutting the the, the chant when he he point they would yeah. cut it and they, for for i mean i can say this you are and then the other side said the Not, abbreviated yeah 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 goal. yeah mm, that's yeah. it mm, that's what we can't say yeah, that's what we can't say so mm. i listen I, I i think also very interesting considering they had to deal with amazon right they had a they had a meeting with amazon last week mm -hmm. and that's the rumored front runner for streaming for rights for SmackDown. You know, and listen, I got a ton of messages. People are like, oh, how could, you know, this would have been a great example of TV 14. Yes, but they could, they can't go TV 14 with, with SmackDown. It's not possible. They have to, they have to, even if they, they change the rating to TV 14, it would mean nothing because these, are, this is why they wanted to go TV 14 on USA for this exact reaction. They were tired of having to bleep out the crowd on cable. So, Listen, they started that segment. He got into it with Austin Theory. He did a people's elbow. McAfee did one. People were thrilled. And then he went to Finn Balor, AJ Styles. That was a fun match. LWO promo was interrupted by Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. LA Knight defeated The Miz. Asuka defeated Bailey. The Grayson Waller effect with John Cena. This was fascinating. It was interrupted by the bloodline. And it featured a face-to-face -face with Solo. You know what was interesting? The Rock and Cena hugged it in the back, right? Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah, I did see that. That's that like almost making amends, like no hard feelings. Yeah, and but and then and then Solo, as, his cousin. I took it as solitary. Uh, as um, just real quick, I took it as solidarity. Like, yeah, we're both on strike. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's why they're, they're all working now. So I thought this was cool. You know, I thought this was a really fun SmackDown. I really enjoyed it, but they got Cena back. Think about this, right? You had, you had John Cena. You had uh, The Rock. You had Rey Mysterio all on one show. Big when is show. the last time that happened? <laughs> Early 2000s, I'm guessing. I would say probably early 2000s. Wild. Fascinating stuff. I thought this was a fun SmackDown. I really enjoyed it. I, and I also think Pat McAfee's super, super talented. I, I mean, what a, what a great story for that guy. The deal he got with ESPN and the things he's doing. Uh, you know, what does this lead to? I don't know. You know, when does The Rock come back? What does he do? I think WrestleMania is going to be very telling leading into this. They don't do things for no reason. Uh, there was a reason why they put him on TV. Maybe a little bit of, of it was a distraction to get away from the layoffs that they had. But in reality, I think they're just, it dates worked. He said he'll show up and they're going to see where this goes. But I think this is the last year you really could do this, right? This Roman Reigns thing. I, I think if you're going to do it the proper way, this is probably the last year that you should do it. I don't think. I don't think another year for 41 would make sense. You know, this should have happened a year ago. LA would have made the most sense. The story, how much longer can you continue Roman's dominance? You know, does he get dethroned before The Rock? Or is it The Rock that does it? Or does he just destroy The Rock? Does he beat The Rock and really become the tribal chief? A lot to think about here. We're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Guys, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter. You want you want these scoops. You want these little tidbits. You want these little insights. I drop it all on Twitter for absolutely free. I don't charge anybody for anything. For, uh, for now. For now. For now. We'll see. I don't promise anything. But I give the, you know, this is all a blast for me. So if you want to follow me, follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. Let's go into Collision from last night. Matt, what did you think of Collision? I want to get your thoughts on this before I go into the breakdown. Like, as, as you know, someone that you watch it very differently than me, right? You watch it because you got to write my show notes, but you also don't watch it formulating this, you know, uh, a talking point. 
So the way I watch wrestling is very different now than, than the way you watch it. You still watch it uh, predominantly as someone that's just watching wrestling while I have to, you know, as break down notes yeah. and stuff. So what did you think of the well, show? I'm somewhere in between on it uh, yeah. as far as how I watch it. But having said that, um, I thought that the uh, the story with Big Bill and Ricky Starks, they're making Ricky Starks a star um, with uh, – actually beating Brian Danielson. So that's obviously going to continue. That was a great, I loved that. Um, there was some weird stuff with uh, um, some sort of angle they might be doing with the production. Yeah. In a Keith yeah. Lee, uh, thing. That one was weird. I know you, you probably have something to say about that. And yeah. then, so I didn't know what to think of that, but I did like uh, the main event actually I was better than I thought. I thought for sure Brett Baker was winning that title. Yeah, uh, it was so it was actually a very good main there. event. Yeah. It was yeah, it was it's and... an interesting show because you know, they obviously want to and, and it's quite evident they want to separate this from Dynamite. They don't want this to be Dynamite oh, yeah. 2.0. And when CM Punk was there, there was this emphasis put on that, you know, it felt like a different promotion when they launched that thing the first couple of weeks, you know, it it's not the same commentators, it's not the same look. Uh, it was, they had squash matches, they had different talent. So I, I like the feel of it. I'm glad that they're continuing it now. But, you know, a couple weird things here, right? Big Bill, Ricky Starks, defeated Brian Danielson and Claudio. This is leading to a match, obviously. Uh, between Ricky and Danielson. They're not, this is not a done deal. Miro cut that, Miro promo, it was insane. He said he didn't humble Powerhouse Hobbs. So their path mu paths must cross again. He yelled at the gods for tempting him <laughs> with his wife, with his hot, flexible wife. This is fun. It's just <laughs> funny. Miro's just <laughs> insane. I mean, and by the way, I was watching this in my uh, in my kitchen on my Google Hub when I had a bunch of people over yesterday. Uh, that's how we, we and Rich was here, so we were all watching it. Uh, AW World Title World Tag Team Title Match FTR defeated the Iron Savages. Boulder and Bronson. Okay. Interesting, right? These guys are on TV every week now. The Iron Savages. They're taking a lot of the um, ROH talent that they had, and they're using them here in collision. In like, and so they're these guys, are but they're not on uh, Dynamite. So, again, you're going back yeah. to keeping certain things separate. So, my uh, question so is, is what, of, why, what are you doing with Ring of Honor? What are you doing with it? It's in this limbo. Like, I mean, what? what is the... Yeah. Where is the benefit of Ring of Honor at this point? Is it that Tony is still attempting to get a deal? Does he think that there's a place for this? Does he think that it may be Max? You know, this could be... You know, here's, here's something unique, right? You could make that an exclusive show on Max. Ring of Honor. And it would make all the sense in the world, right? Everything would totally make sense with what Tony is doing, with having all those titles on TV... Having every, you know titles defended, you're still doing those quarterly pay per views. Uh, you know, Honor Club really doesn't make sense at that point, but why would it? And I'm sure they don't have a lot of people on in, in Honor Club. I don't even know what those numbers are. But that would be an interesting number to find out. But if you are yes. leading, if you are leading into some like you, Tony doesn't do things to just to do them right. Everything has to make sense here. And does it make sense for this? company for AEW to have so much ring of honor on their television. Okay. And we're, we're not even, we're not even done here with this. You had Keith Lee do an interview, right? With Lexi in a pre-tape. And did you see it was the 22nd attempt? Take 22. That's what it said. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't know what the hell that was. And I don't know if it took him 22 takes to do that pre-tape. At what take do you say, okay, this isn't working. Let, let's just do something else. It feels I don't know this like was an a... angle is coming. Yeah, well, it just felt like it. Especially the, know, what, the what is it? Like, like, a, like, a, like a really one. crappy producer? Is that a gimmick to have? Yeah. and I I'm a really bad segment a producer. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm now a wrestler. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's going back to 1990s WWF. Mm -hmm. you, got, you, got the, you got the sanitation worker. You got the, uh, you got the IRS agent. You got the millionaire, and you got the really bad production hand. 
<laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, Keith Lee did that interview. I don't know what that was. John Silver defeated Anthony Bowen. Fascinating. You also had Aussie Open in a squash match with uh, Wes Barkley and uh, PB Smooth. And now they're challenging for the ring. Are they challenging back for the Ring of Honor tag titles? Is that what who they issued the challenge? No, was it FTR? No, it was FTR. They challenged yeah, FTR. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Then you had Andrade and Scorpio Sky. Andrade looked great. Scorpio was great. Uh, Andrade is now entering a feud. What happened? I thought him and Malachi were going to be the answer here, right? Yeah, Malachi's been off TV. Um, I don't know what's going on there. Wasn't the, mm -hmm. what, weren't they going into that direction? As or did I just what? manifest? When when he I had his match, with, did I manifest it? No, I'm serious. Did I because he was no, he was feuding with the House of Black, wasn't he? Or is this all in my head? I think he was. Yeah, I think maybe they changed directions. I mean, well, they, they obviously we'll go did. Back to it. Yeah, they obviously mm -hmm. did. So it looks next week the match is him and Jay White, and I'm like, man, that's a great mega match. Mm -hmm. I want to see that. You had the righteous Dutch and Vince, Vincent, defeating the Hardys. And I think they challenged for the uh, ROH. This got a, yeah, this got a lot of heat. This definitely got a lot of heat. What, the, the pin um, on the Hardys? Yeah, you, uh, the, the fans were visibly upset. And it was yeah. a good angle. And the main event was the AWTBS title match. Chris Stratland defeating Britt Baker. Uh, this coming after the... Um, Rampage, where Chris Stratlander defeated uh, Jade. So now the big Jade question, go, yep. where's Jade going? Does Jade go to WWE? I can tell you, a year and a half ago, or whenever it was, uh, I, I had a conversation with someone over there, and they, are, they were just stunned by her, right? She's already a complete package. When you see her, you think, my gosh, She's a star. Look how she looks. Forget, I forgot about in ring and whatever. I'm not. WWE doesn't even care about that. They'll, 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 they'll condition you to be whatever. But she, she, she had a great match. Probably one of her best. She looks great. Uh, does she want to do the WWE schedule with a kid? I don't know. She's not going to wrestle once a week. I'll tell you that. Or maybe she wants the challenge, you know? And, you know, isn't she represented by WME? I believe she, be. she is. I believe she's represented by Endeavor. So, I mean, that, that, that makes all the sense in the world, right? You're already represented by them. You could get a great deal with them. You could do something. There's, that, there's, there's the ability to venture off and do other projects with WME representing you. I think I think it makes a, whole, a lot of sense for Jade, but as far as she goes, I don't know. I don't have an insight on that. Next week card also looks great for uh, Collision. Brian Danielson, Ricky Starks, and a Texas Tornado Deathmatch. AEW Tag Team Champions, FTR, defend against the Work Horsemen, Anthony Henry and J.D. Drake, Andrade, J. White, and Rob Van Dam in action. Mr. Saturday Mission Night, Michigan. Rob Van Dam, because yeah. it's, it's in your hometown. In, yeah. yeah. Uh, we also next week, Grand Slam here in Queens, New York, in Flushing, Queens, New York at Arthur Ashe Stadium. This is, you know, they did a great job at packing this card. I have to tell you that. They've done a great, great job here. So far, this is a card. AW World Championship. MJF defends against Samoa Joe. That match is going to be hot. AW World Women's Championship. Soraya defends against Tony Storm. AW International Champion. John Moxley defends against Ray Phoenix. Title versus title. Ring of Honor World Champion Claudio Castagnoli versus the New Japan Strong Openweight Champion Eddie Kingston. Now, if Eddie's going to have a moment, you don't this you do it, it here? Oh, that promo. This is it. That promo yeah, Eddie cut say, on I Collision. Gonna, I was going to tell you. Holy moly. Yeah. You know, it is, it is a shame. 
that this man over the last 20 years of his career has not been on national television that entire time. You know, remarkable. So good. The passion he has so good. I, I mean, I've seen Kingston wrestle so much here in New York in my, in my lifetime. He is one of those guys that is so good and so passionate. When you see him live, uh, you automatically recognize how good he is. Unfortunately, there was never a home for him. Now he has a home. I hope he wins this title in New York because that's an incredible moment to be in that building, you know, and to give the fans that. And also, it elevates him. You're creating another star. You also have Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara in a match. All right, listen. But here's my question. Where's Kenny? Where are the Bucks? Where's Hangman? Are they not on this card? Are you not oh, advertising man. them? They're on Rampage. Yes. Yeah, look at if you go down there. So Rampage, it. here you go. ROH six man tag team championship, Mogul Embassy. Brian Cage and the Gates of Agony defend against the Elite. AW Trios Championship, Anthony Bowen and Max Caster, the acclaimed of Billy Gunn, defend against the Dark Order. Darby and Sting versus Luchasaurus and Christian Cage. But no, where's Kenny? Good question. I don't know. I mean, I'm. Where's Kenny? We. You know, I'd like to I see. Mean, I I'd like to see this. something with him. I, I yeah. would imagine there's going to be a segment with him. I, I yeah. don't see him not being there. For Wrestle Dream so far, this card is also building up. Brian Danielson, Ricky Starks, Hangman Page, Swerve Strickland, AW Tag Titles, FTR versus Aussie Open. Shibata defends the ROH Pure Championship, and I'm sure we're going to get a couple more matches here, but. Very, very cool card. I think the last couple of days, we got some really good wrestling. And, I, and I, was, I was happy with it. I loved it. I hope this Arthur Ashe show, some tickets move now. And things start changing a little bit. Uh, because they, they, they could definitely use it. Now, here's the thing. Are they, they're, doing a Texas, they're doing a Texas death match with, with uh, Brian Danielson and Ricky Starks. And they're also having a match on, on, at Russell Dream? Uh, no, you rode Ricky Starks. I, you know, MG... It's not Ricky Starks. And I read it because I'm like Anchorman. I have to read what's on the paper. It's Zack Sabre Jr. Not Ricky Starks. We're going to go to a quick break here and come back with our final segment. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. I can't believe you did that. Wrestling Observer Live final segment here on Sports Byline. Uh, you know, I, my buddy Rich always jokes, like, if you, put, if you put something in front of me, I'll read it out loud. And no matter how much I know that it's not right, I'm still reading it because how could my notes be wrong? <laughs> and according to MGR producer, this came directly from the Wrestling Observer website that Ricky Starks is facing Brian Danielson at WrestleDream. I don't believe you, Matt. I think you just, you just do this to mess with me. You also spelled censor wrong and my brain malfunctioned. Like you sp sp spelled it like, like, a, like a censor on the car that's malfunctioning instead of, you know, censorship. I thought that was a censor. Yeah, he, he, he likes to keep me on my toes here. This was a fascinating week. I, I very much like this. Uh, I'm looking forward to being at Grand Slam, seeing a lot of you guys. If you are going to Grand Slam on Wednesday, say hello, please. If you see me running around like a lunatic, just stop me. Be like, hey, dude. I just want to say hi. I love meeting you guys. I love talking to you guys. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a tremendous privilege for me to be able to do this with all of you uh, and, and to have fun and break some stories. And I'm going to meet, I'm going to see a lot of my friends at AEW, a lot of my, my buddies that are there. I think this is, uh, you know, wrestling is fun. As long as you're having fun, that's great. I, the, the argument, the back and forth, you know, the, that turnstile number that made people's brain bleed. Uh, was something else this week. But next week, we're going to be back. I'm sure a lot of news coming out of Arthur Ashe, more matches being built for Wrestle Dream, WWE and everything that they're doing here with Cena and Solo and everybody else. I think we're going to have a nice end of year. I, I, I anticipate it's going to be a lot of fun this year. Guys, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. And I'll be back next week with Wrestling Observer Live. See you next time.